The human mind cannot imagine the impossible. Today we are witnesses to and participants in what is not only the beginning of a new historical epoch, but also of a new critical stage of human development. This is unprecedented, at least since the beginning of the so-called civilized period of human history. What we considered science fiction of tomorrow is becoming an incredible reality today. The future has begun. This movie tells the story of the future. On the reach of the hand, the era of intelligent space. Life online awaits us. Every human and every object will spend every second of his or her life in the network, forming a global intelligent space, a huge social network. Biometric passports and IDs will appear, and then become physically implanted in the human body, serving as a wallet, credit access, driver's license, insurance, and later as a communication terminal. We will be able to manage our own property from any place on Earth. But not all we own shall we use all the time. The common perception of private property as something that we can physically possess will be replaced by systems of temporary, partial or common property. To which system you belong will be as important as which corporation provides you with life support services. A corporation will care for your safety, monitor and maintain your health, the quality of food you buy, entertainment you enjoy, your education and employment will happen within this corporation should you lack the means to pay for being part of the system. The coming world is too complicated to preserve privacy and anonymity and at the same time it is simple enough to make it possible for everyone to watch and survey everyone else. We will cross a threshold where we will all become willing participants in the reality show and will pay for the possibility to be offline. All paperwork will disappear and all social services will be outsourced to lifestyle corporations and be managed online. A bureaucracy in its present form will practically disappear too. State and government functions will be limited to control, lawmaking and law execution. Lawmaking and execution decisions will be first put online for people to vote on, opening the epoch of direct democracy. The traditional mass media will completely disappear. It will be replaced by choice of content systems which will become the new mass media. In fact, every individual will become a sort of mass media, him or herself. Cheap means of production, the omnipresent online and the possibility for anyone to directly broadcast themselves from any geographic location in real time. A huge network of non-professional correspondents. All of that will drastically change the way in which news is made. Soon the surfaces surrounding us will be transformed into a kind of publicity matrix. Using full knowledge of you, of your desires, tastes, hobbies, your way of life. Those matrices will offer you goods and services on the basis of this knowledge. It is also possible that you will be able to choose your goods and services only within the range proposed by your own lifestyle corporation. Producers of mobile phones and operating systems, postal services and social networks already know practically everything about everyone. Long dead movie stars will be resurrected. Marilyn Monroe and Marlon Brando will again grace blockbusters on our screens. We'll listen to new songs by Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson. Real actors will be substituted more and more by virtuals. We ourselves will be able to participate in the creation of original films and games, ordering producers to implement our own scenarios, events and endings. Movies and computer games will merge to become one entity. Cinemas as we know them today will gradually become as rare as theatres did before finally disappearing. The emergence of new kinds of sport, as global as football, is inevitable and everyone will be able to participate in those games. A Cyber Olympic Games will take place alongside the traditional game, becoming globally popular over time. New technologies will allow us to receive video information in new ways. Image and sound quality will grow exponentially. A radical increase in data transfer speed and storage space will change our way of life. We shall be educated at home. Our whole life will be recorded. We shall have business meetings while staying in our beds. Our insurance companies will control our blood sugar levels. We shall attend birthdays of our friends while not leaving our living room chairs. A new stage in the life of humankind will start. An all-encompassing virtual reality. The world behind the looking glass. A new world. 
We often see it in movies. It is partially present already in our everyday life, but the moment when people will be able to fully submerge themselves into virtual reality is still to come. God will not rule and give orders. God will be a person who writes software code, determining algorithms of development, creating the environment. In fact, programmers are the gods of a new world. It is they who will create for us the endless succession of infinite virtual universes in which we can become what we want to be, live where we want to live, and do what we want to do without any limitations and restrictions. Just pay and live. Very soon the virtual surface of an average sized town will fit in a shoebox or be stored in millions of computers. For example, while renting a small three square meter room in a ghetto, you will be able to live in a beautiful castle on the seashore because a virtual reality will be significantly cheaper than a real thing. You may be crippled and confined to bed, but still be a multiple world mountain running champion. You can be ugly and weak, but beautiful and strong, because the thing you call a body is only a physical shell for your mind, and your physical location will not be important. You can live in one place, but work, study and receive medical treatment in different continents. By and large, a future world is a world without geography, borders and nationalities. Instead, it is the world of countless groups and communities. The creation of new virtual worlds and emigration to those worlds will be one of the branches of man's evolution. More exactly, an involution, when tourism turns in upon itself. But let us come back to reality. All the above mentioned has yet to be constructed and serviced, and before arriving there we will have to overcome catastrophes, wars and epidemics. Unfortunately, the world which surrounds us today will be with us for some time before moving away and clearing a space for our happiness in a virtual nirvana. Let's briefly look through some sectors. Energy. An enormous amount of energy will be necessary for all those technical marvels that will surround us. In the foreseeable future, hydrocarbons will be the main energy source, but gradually it will be replaced with renewable sources such as sunlight, wind, tides. More and more often waste materials will be used. But in the future, the main source of energy will come from safe, clean, unlimited energy of nuclear fusion. For the moment, controlled nuclear fusion is the only known process that can give to humankind enough energy to explore the solar system. But it is very important to diminish the expenses. That's why promoting energy saving and the rational use of energy sources, increasing energy effectiveness, will become one of the main ideologies of the future. Food. In the foreseeable future, the world will still be largely dependent on food. The rapidly growing demand for food as the result of population growth will be met with the mass production of genetically modified products, but those in their turn will be replaced with the synthetic food. The advancements in biochemistry will permit creation of printers, which will print products. In order to get an apple or a meatloaf, it will not be necessary to plant a tree or to raise beef cattle. It will be sufficient to fill in a special device with the organic raw materials, press a button and wait till it's ready. In 50 years, the human body will not need food in the present day sense, but rather it will need energy, which it will receive directly in one or another form through the existing communication networks. War. The war of the future is a permanent war. It goes on forever as an element of a global competition. This is a remote war of machines, information technologies and software codes. The greatest warriors in this war are present day gamers and programmers. Unmanned micro and macro devices will perform key military tasks absolutely imperceptibly. They will only be revealed when the struggle for enemy data acquisition or communications breakdown is achieved. Large-scale wars as we presently understand them will disappear, freeing other means to reach the goals. Future wars will be essentially a combination of covert operations and will be driven by technology. Medicine. Rapid advances in genetic technologies and transplantology will permit us to avoid many desires, to improve our genome and significantly prolong our life. Powerful communication networks will permit remote monitoring of our health conditions. Online diagnostics, consulting and medical checks will become a common practice and new robotic technologies will make a remote surgery possible. Childbirth will not be so painful anymore as new technologies will allow us grow a fetus outside of the mother's body. Aging organs and dying tissues will be replaced with the new ones which will be grown from the genetic material of the patient. This will permit us to approach immortality, something we'll talk about later. Education. 
The possibility of instant remote access to all information and knowledge databases from any geographical location will lead to the global spread of homeschooling. Educational institutions' main function will be to control students' knowledge and issue diplomas instead of teaching and educating. Schools and universities as we know them today will gradually disappear. For example, hundreds of thousands of students will study in one school or university. Finally, the process of knowledge and skill acquisition will be simplified to downloading necessary software directly into the human brain. From that moment, education will depend on price and availability of necessary programs. Space exploration. With time, the necessity for humans to travel will significantly diminish. Before that moment, mankind will start to use the air and later Earth orbit as an environment for personal transportation and then as a place to live. Human population increase will force people into the uninhabited areas in the north to inhabit the ocean, air, space and finally virtual reality will grow. Cities with a powerful microclimate, particularly independent from the outside environment, will be built. The concept of such cities will be used to build settlements on other planets. And finally, life in virtual reality will attract a dense concentration of the population and to limit the necessity to travel. Many cities will disappear. Geography will cease to matter. Geopolitics. The world remains a combination of national, political, social and cultural limitations. We can also observe the ongoing process of influence redistribution between the world's regional powers and their strengthening. All those limitations will be removed and the world will finally become a gigantic Babylon with a single currency and language. A single political system controlled by the world government. Geopolitics will disappear. All nations, nationalities and national consciousness itself will cease to exist without support. In global world conditions, state democracy and capitalism will be replaced by private corporations, which will later become states in and of themselves. But the possibility to choose a place to live, freedom from geography, independent energy and food sources will make humanity really independent, and Babylon will split up into millions of small states. The epoch of a new political geography will arrive. Empires will be created and fragment afterwards into smaller entities, then reappear and again split up. The pulsation of history. Under such conditions, only those states which sacrifice part of their citizens' economic and political freedoms, preserve their loyalty and live through the destruction of a new Babylon, will remain independent, preserving in this way their people and identity. Employment. Robots will become our ears, our eyes, our hands, our slaves, and possibly our bane. They will work in production facilities, clean, cure, fight wars, think, and it is very possible that they may even live instead of us. First all physical work and then most of the intellectual work will be done by robots. This will completely change our life. An epoch of new cultural enlightenment will arrive, but together with it will come new dangers and challenges. What will happen when a fast, strong and defiant, unusually intelligent organism with a network consciousness will attain a real consciousness and the ability to reflect upon itself? Above the horizon, he has defeated death by his own death. A human life has neither sense nor purpose. Where are we flying to? Where are we? When? Are we in a remote corner or are we in the center of the incredible time-space continuum which gives us life and death? We do not know who created this illumination, nor when or why. We do not know, but we are absolutely confident we can know ourselves and the world around us, all the time discovering something new and through this justifying our existence. Our bodies are weak. They quickly decompose, they are fragile. They need a favorable environment, not natural to most of the universe. Our mind is much stronger than our body, but it also has its limits. In order to be able to cross the borders of the solar system, to overcome discrimination imposed by the universe upon us, to visit other worlds, we must stop being the humans we are now. We must become stronger, more intelligent, and live much longer. We must defeat death. 
The paradox is by approaching immortality, we are killing the human species. In the 21st century, we are going to make another step on the way to our evolution. The first independent step. After that, a new history awaits us. <laughs>